Some of you probably won't believe me if I tell you that I used to suffer from a lot of anxiety. I had anxiety about authority figures, I had anxiety about school, about girls, about social situations. It was pretty overwhelming at one point in my life. Today I can say that I am cured of anxiety. And one of the things that brought me there is the mind's wave. It's a little diagram and mental tool that I want to share with you today. <sighs> Anxiety is something that somebody asked about and we actually deal with it a lot on this channel. It is so pervasive. For a lot of people it's pretty intense. It prevents us from experiencing a lot of the things we want to experience in life and connecting with people taking on new challenges, going after the things that we want. In general, when we're trying to change a mind state, there's two main routes we can take. One is pulling the rug out from under it in some way or another. And I've done a lot of videos that deal with that on some level. Today, I want to talk about the, the gradual approach. And I would say for me, this was equally as important to know about as the, the quick approaches. Those quick approaches aim to shift some basic presumption we have about life. So that, you know, if we can, if we can let go, for instance, of our appearance, how we appear to others, it's gonna help us with most social anxiety. But with, with this mind's wave, it's going to give you a tool that will actually work for a lot of things in life whenever you're trying to change a behavior or a habit. So I'm going to use that word habit and I'm going to use it very deliberately to mean something that is pretty ingrained in our mental behavior. And often these things are going to become so ingrained that they are just our normal. And we will use words like I am an anxious person. I am afraid of bees. There's a bee down here. <laughs> I am this or that. Instead of saying that that is a fear that I currently have or that is an anxiety that I currently have. So we identify with it. And those habits then become part of our mental makeup of who we are. So today, as we learn the mind's wave, we're going to learn a way to change those habits. And we're going to do it through understanding how those habits are created. Just having this mind's wave will allow us often to move towards creating positive habits because we know that there's different stages of it. And having that understanding, having that understanding allows us to have more control over the process. It's not just, ah, here's all these fears and thoughts and they all just swirl around in my head. Suddenly they're all clear and I know, ah yes, this is something that I developed. Here's how I developed it in my mind. I turned this into a habit and I call it fear of bees, but it's just a mental habit that I've created and I can create a new one. Here's what it looks like. We've got this nice smooth wave. And if we start at the top, this is where our mental behaviors, our mental habits begin. And they start up there in the effort stage. So let's, let's take something like that anxiety that we feel, uh, social anxiety. We can think, oh, I was just born with that. But what actually probably happened is that at some point in our life we had to learn that anxiety. It could have been super early stuff that happened in our lives way back when we were two years old but something in there we learned that behavior and this part especially when we're developing negative behaviors might not often feel like an effort like I didn't purposely make an effort to become socially anxious. No, you didn't. And that effort can be disguised so that it doesn't even feel like effort. 
but we had to put mental work into it at some point to learn that and get that going. When we start there, then the slope starts to change and it starts to go downhill. As we go downhill, we build momentum. And the first thing is that this becomes a tendency. So here's this tendency in my life now to see somebody and feel a little bit nervous. This is a point when I could change it. I could change that through effort. I could slope up before there's too much momentum. I could start curving back up again. But by the time it's a tendency, then there's that momentum going. And unless we have a toolkit or we have the will or the guidance, we're going to continue down that slope. And that slope eventually is going to become habit. And here it is. That's the simple path, essentially, that all of my behaviors follow. I start with making some kind of effort when I, let's say I'm going to start smoking cigarettes. This does not taste good for anybody at first. So I kind of, you know, smoke it and <clears throat> okay, and then get used to that burn and I go through that effort stage. The momentum starts and it becomes a tendency. I'm doing it more and more often. Eventually I've done it enough and I followed that momentum down. It's become a habit and I may even identify with it. By now in your life, if you're like the rest of us, you have all kinds of habits and probably a good collection of negative ones that you don't really want in your life that feel like they are you. And it feels like there's no way out of them. And it could be alcohol, it could be drugs, it could be video games, it could be social anxiety, it could be a thousand thousand things that we've turned into this habit. Now, some of those things you may choose that I want to have in my life. I want to have video games. Fine. Absolutely fine. You get to be the master of your destiny and make your own choices. It's one of the beautiful things about life. So, not saying that any of those things you should get rid of, but if you find yourself in that position that you don't want this in your life, and you feel like it's a habit, well then, here's how you get out. You notice at the bottom, it slopes up again. So it takes effort to start to rework that. But we get to know that after that effort, it's gonna start, our new behavior is gonna start to move down the slope, gain momentum, move into tendency, and eventually move into habit. And this is how all these habits work. So, I smoke and I want to replace this with, let's say, meditation. And here I am, I start to get into that mental groove. So, so these are neural pathways, they're really strong. And in that mental groove, I know I'm in habit. I want to pick up that cigarette and smoke it. Now, here's my moment. And this is the tough part, is that effort. So I'm going to switch over. I'm going to say, mm, I'm going to set it aside and I'm going to sit down and meditate. Now switching the mental thing, making a mental switch is the important thing. If I just say, I'm not going to smoke. Okay, I set it over there. It's just sitting there waiting for me. My willpower, you've seen my videos on willpower, it's draining, it's draining, it's draining and <laughs> game over. I pick it up and I smoke again. Instead, I set it down and I move immediately to an alternative behavior. So, I'm going to move to meditating, to my favorite meditative music. Right there now, I have made some effort. And it's going to be an uphill battle for a while. And I'm going to have to keep doing that. But again, I get to know oh, there is a break coming. Because after that effort for a little bit, it's going to start to go downhill going to start to gain momentum and it's going to become a tendency and eventually if I keep that up and follow the momentum it becomes a habit just knowing the mind's wave allows us to understand how we got into the negative habits in the first place they don't just happen 
I'm not just magically in them. I had to go through that effort and then all the way down that slope until it became habit. Now, I know that, I can redo that. I can go through the effort of changing the behavior to a new one. I've used this for all kinds of behaviors and you can use it too for almost anything in your life. That is an ingrained habit that you don't want anymore. You must remember a really important point that it's not just saying no to the habit, setting it aside and staring at it. It's immediately switching to another alternative behavior or replacement behavior so that you are consciously saying, I'm taking this habit and I'm turning it into this new habit. Doing that, that is going to give you the power to make that switch. Our mind, it will just, mm, that momentum, the mind momentum is so strong, my friends. It's so strong. To overcome it, we need to change its focus. We need to fool it. And that's how we do it. Switch to another positive habit. Now, how does this apply directly to anxiety? Here's how you'd use it. The good or bad news, depending on how you take it, is that I'm really gonna push meditation here. We need to meditate because meditation makes us aware of what our mind is doing. Otherwise, it's just running on autopilot. It goes wherever it wants. When we observe our mind, it looks like a chaotic mess. Meditation, it simply makes it so that when we look at our mind, we can see what it's doing. If we have a reaction, an emotional reaction, we see that. We're aware that it's happening instead of being lost in it. Most of us are completely lost in the games that our mind is playing. But meditation will bring awareness so that you can see and observe what your mind is doing. Now, this is key with anxiety because we have to be aware of when anxiety begins in our minds. Otherwise, we aren't really aware of it until we're fully on the anxiety boat and just so worried. Our mind is telling stories. We've turned it into this huge emotional reaction. We're completely lost in the story, in the tale that our mind is telling. The more we can be aware of that first feeling of anxiousness, the more we're gonna be able to stop right there, make that our cigarette, make that the thing we're switching. As soon as I feel anxiety, I stop and I switch to whatever alternative behavior you're going to choose. Again, meditation is a great one, one breath meditation. I will try to remember to link to that in the description you could immediately go to the one breath meditation and turn it into a three or four or five or 20 breath meditation. Whatever you choose, choose that one thing and stick with it. And then every single time, it doesn't matter if you notice the anxiety when you're oh, super, super anxious in storytelling. Do your best. It's gonna be more effort to do it there, but try. Over time, you're gonna notice it earlier and earlier. And what you're doing is you're starting to rewrite to regroove those neural pathways so that your mind learns, oh, as soon as I start to feel anxiety, I go into meditation. And that, that changes the whole game. Before it learned, as soon as I start to feel anxiety, I get to start getting a physiological reaction and, and then I get to start thinking about things that could go wrong and how it's going to be and then I can start getting really fearful and anxious. And we're saying, no, nope, mind, we're going to rewrite that whole story there. What we're going to do is as soon as I feel anxiety, boom, I switch into meditation. Every time, every time, every time. If we're relentless with this, then we will rewrite those habits. And eventually, the thing that we used to call anxiety won't be there anymore. You may have a physiological reaction at first, but you notice it immediately and you switch. And it's become habitual to switch. So that I feel it, I stop. I do my one breath meditation. It's habit, I don't even have to work for it anymore. 
I moved it from effort to tendency to habit. It's become my new reality, my new base of operations, my new foundation. That is how you apply the mind's wave to these sorts of problems. Whatever it is, it's a super multi-purpose tool. So, in the comments, share if there is a negative habit, even something that you have identified yourself with, and what you would like it to switch it to. And when you put this down in writing and you say, I'm going to take my smoking habit and I'm going to switch it to meditation, then start doing it. Use this tool and use it aggressively and say, starting today, every time I want to pick up a cigarette, I'm going to switch to this alternative behavior. Fight through that first effort, and I promise you, if you fight through that effort phase, you're going to start to get momentum, and then it'll go back down. One last thing to remember is that these, each wave we've created in our life, it creates a neural pathway that essentially stays burned into our brain. You can think of all these old roadways in there that are maybe 10 years old, I quit smoking. But that roadway is still in there. You know, it might be kind of ruddy now and stuff. But if I form that, it's easier for me to get back into smoking because that roadway is there, that pathway is there. And already worn down for me. Knowing that, then you can be on guard against those things. You know, don't even pick up a cigarette or turn your eyes away from that cigarette ad because you know that that's a weakness now essentially in you. The longer you can stay away from it and the more effectively you've replaced it with a really positive habit, the more strength you're going to have to resist it later in life. But those pathways, for the most part, they kind of remain there for the rest of our lives and there's that thing that's easy to slip back into. So that takes self-honesty to say, boy, I smoked for 10 years. I know that that pathway is there and it's kind of waiting for me. And then you're just, you're wary about it. And you know, hey, I'm not going to play around with that one or make that my show of strength. I'm just going to stay away from that one because I know it's a place where, where I could fall. All right, my friends. Love to you all from, I would say, sunny Hawaii, but cloudy today up on the mountainside here. And can't wait to see what you have to say in the comments.